Good morning. It is a good morning indeed. If you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Samuel chapter 13, starting with verse 13. I'm going to have you guys stand this morning for the reading of God's Word. I'm only reading like four chapters, so you should be all right. No. Just for this first part. 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 13. Samuel said to Saul, you have acted foolishly. You have not kept the commandments of the Lord your God, which he commanded you. For now the Lord would have listened. He would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. But now your kingdom shall not endure. The Lord has sought out for himself a man after his own heart. And the Lord has appointed him a ruler over his people because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you. Let's pray. Father, let us be a people after your own heart. Let us be a people, God, that will obey every commandment that you have for us. God, that we would not walk in disarray, walk in the wilderness, Lord, but we would walk in the fullness that you have for us, each one of us. For here we see that, God, you had taken away something that a man could have had for for a lifetime and generations. But because of his disobedience, your spirit did not remain upon him anymore. Father, I pray that we become a people that long for the spirit to remain upon us, within us, and flow through us. That we remain a people, God. That we become a people that is so excited about the spirit, the presence of the spirit of God being in our services that we not push him away or push him out, but that he is center, that he is most important every time we gather together, the Holy Spirit that shows us, that leads us because he knows the will that you have for us. So I thank you this morning, God, and I bless you this morning. Jesus' name, amen. All right, you may be seated. Good stuff. Listen, if you have your Bibles, again, does he might pack their Bible to church? He might bring their Bible. I mean, I know we got them on our cell phones, but it's really good to have like a physical Bible. Um, I love, I love, I love holding my Bible. I like hug it. I'll hug it and kiss it. And I just, it's just, I just, it's, it's really cool. I have my tablet too that I use, you know, and I have my phone and all my other stuff. I've got, um, several Bibles that I look out of. But I want to talk to you this morning about a challenge I feel like the Lord has for each one of us that we become sons and daughters, that we become men and women after the heart of God. And I want to talk to you this morning about what that means, what that looks like, having a heart of God. Because we know the things that David did, we know the things that David went through. Yet God saw, saw him as a man after his own heart. Because he didn't look at all of his faults and failures. He looks at the heart of man. And we're going to go into that this morning. I'm reading straight from the Bible, so here we go. This is an uh, NASB version, starting with verse 1 of chapter 16. Verse 1 of chapter 16. It says, Now the Lord said to Samuel, we just read about Samuel being able to give him this, Thank you, Faith. Given this, Samuel, given this um, decree or what have you to, um, to Saul that he was no longer going to be blessed because of his disobedience, because of his foolishness. And here we have Samuel. It says, how long will you grieve over Saul since I have rejected him from the king 
from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and go. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have selected a king for myself among his sons. God is looking for you, sons and daughters that are willing to have that kind of a heart that he can use you and take you and walk you into this world and introduce you to the things of the world, the people of the world that he wants for you to touch and minister to. That's why he needs us to be a people with our hearts sold out totally, totally to him. But Samuel said to him, how can I go? When Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And you guys might think that. When you go through something in life, you might think, well, how am I going to do this? Because if I do this, this is going to happen. This is where we're going to learn that obedience trumps everything. Obedience to Christ trumps everything. Whatever God says for you to do, do it. Watch what happens when you do it. God will always make a way out before the fall, and he will always make a way for you. If he's called you to do something, he will make a way for that something to happen. He's going to every time. We're going to have to trust him. We're going to have to lean upon him. Even when we don't see in our own human eyes what the outcome will be, we know then trust that God will give us the outcome that he's called for us to have in that situation. Listen, and it says, how can I do this? He'll kill me. And the Lord said to him, he's making a way right here. He said to him, take a heifer with you and say, he's not lying because he is taking a heifer with him, and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. So he's like, all right, we can do that. We can grab a heifer and take it, and we'll go do, do it that way. And <clears throat> because he knew that Saul would have killed him, but this is a whole different avenue. So the Lord's making this way, and he said, take a heifer and go and say that I have come to sacrifice for the Lord. And in verse 3 it says, and you shall invite Jesse to the sacrifice. Jesse's the son, the father of David, and I shall show you what you shall do, and you shall anoint for me, the one whom I designate to you. Now listen, this is important. I hear so many people saying that God said this and God said that and God showed me this and God showed me that. I wish that you would just stop saying that and just start doing what he said to do. Because we say it and then we proclaim that out and then we just say it like God said this and God said that. But watch what your li- how your life is going in those God says. Is your life being uh, filled full of obedience and flourishing, or is your life going on a downhill slope? Watch when you say, God said this, God said that, because it is very important that you know the will of God. It's very important that you hear the voice of God for your life, because this is, he's getting ready to anoint this young boy, and this young boy and this family has no idea what's getting ready to happen. They have no idea that, that he's going to anoint him to be king. That is kept that's between him and God. But check this out. So we have to hear the voice of God well. Try it out. Like if, if, you say, if you say in your heart, the Lord said this, before you tell someone else that, see what happens with the Lord said. See if it actually comes to pass. And you can say, the Lord said this, and I did this, and this happened. But a lot of times I hear people say, God said this, and then their life's just a mess. And their life goes to a mess, and they go downhill. Before you start sharing with everyone else what God said, make sure it's him that said it and not the world or not the enemy of the world. And it says, Samuel did as the Lord said and came to to Bethlehem. And the elders of the city trembled to meet him and said, listen, they were trembling to meet him and said, this this would be like, they asked him, are are you coming in peace? This would be like the president of the United States pulling up in front of the church with an entourage of, of, of law enforcement and his bodyguards and all those things pulling up in front of the, the church. And, and we're in here going, what's going on? And, you know, with the president of the United States, and we, I would think, you know, is he here to kill us all? What's going to happen? You know, I don't know. I mean, like, why would the president pull? But this is equivalent to, that, to something like that. This man, Samuel, was so known, so well known throughout the region and country. When he showed up somewhere, there was something getting ready to happen. 
And so he shows up, and these guys are trembling. And what he says to them here, he says, I want you to consecrate yourselves. Consecrate means that you clean yourself up, that you get yourself ready, that you change your clothes, you put some new clothes on, and you change your way of doing things. Change it up and get ready because I'm getting ready. The Lord's getting ready to do something in your life. So when you get consecrated, when you get sanctified holy, the Lord will move in your life and show you what he has for you. Consecrate yourselves with me for the sacrifice And he also consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. And I know he he had to pray that consecration over them. Listen. And they entered and took the first son. Now, he must have been this this marvelous looking dude because the first thing he's like in himself, he's like, well, this has got to be the one. This has got to be the one. I mean, he probably looked super amazing on the outside. He was probably just this warrior of a man just standing real tall, and he's just standing up there, and then he sees him and goes, man, this has got to be This has got to be the one. This has got to be the one. And the Lord says in verse 7, it says, he said, Samuel, listen, do not look on his appearance or his height or his stature because I have rejected him. So number one, the first one that comes out, he rejected him. Didn't matter what he looked like. Didn't matter that he was all handsome and tall and had his armor on. He was just a soldier, a war, a war machine. None of that mattered because that does not matter to God. God can use any figure of body. It's the heart that is what he's looking for. It's what's inside that body. We come in all shapes and sizes. Some big, some small, some tall, some short. We come in all shapes and sizes. He's not looking on the outward appearance. So when you look in the mirror and you go, man, I'm ugly, you know, most of us might be. We're not supermodels, some of us. When you look in the mirror, what you should see is how Father sees you. You should see how Father sees your heart, and your heart should reflect that in the mirror. Go, I am a man. I am a daughter. I am a son. I am a child after the heart of God. When you look in the mirror, that's what you should see because that's what God wants to see is the person that he dreamed you to be from the foundation of the earth. That's what he wants to see. And he said to him, don't look at his stature. I've rejected him. Because God does not look on the outward appearance, but he looks at the heart of man. And Jesse brought another son, Abinadab, and then he brought another one. He rejected him. He rejected him. Shema passed by and he rejected him. And these are like, these are, these are mighty warriors that are fi- out here fighting these Philistines. And he says this, he says, and after he brought all seven of them before him, and Samuel said to Jesse, are there any other children? He didn't know how many kids he had. He just start passing them through, and, and he knew that he heard God say, go here and anoint one of Jesse's sons. And here he gets through all through all seven of them, and none of them are anointed. He goes, well, do you have any more kids? And you can imagine, I want to stop here and pause and just, just like go to uh, maybe just a, a back story of David, because it's kind of like him hauling, you know, kind of like, well, I do have I do have like David, like he's out in the field, you know, he's like tending to the sheep. I mean, I, David's out there. I mean, do you want me to bring him in? Can you imagine the ridicule? I mean, we're going to we're gonna daydream here. Can you imagine the ridicule at the table of David every time he would come in for supper at night, you know, and you got these mighty warriors telling about their stories of fighting throughout the day. And then David comes in and is like, oh, David, what did you do today? Oh, today I killed a lion because he did. Today, I killed a lion. Oh, right, David. Oh, remember, you killed a bear, too. Can you imagine the ridicule that David got at the table? Because even the father, you can kind of see some here, kind of a little bit of belittling because he's just a little kid out in the middle of the field tending to the sheep. But see, God don't care about that. God cares about the heart, and he knows what the heart can do. He knows what the heart of man can do. How we can live for him, how we can serve him. And that's what God is calling for. He's wanting a person that will serve him, that would do whatever he says to do. So here David comes in. You know, he's telling him a, a lion and a bear. He's like, wow, David, it's a miracle that you didn't die. 
Can you imagine the father saying, well, David, next time you kill a lion or a bear, won't you cut the head off? Prophesying over him. Why don't you cut the head off and bring it to us so we can see it? Little did they know he's getting ready to slay a giant and chop his head off. That's the kind of God that we serve. That's the kind of God that you and I serve this morning. Doesn't matter what we look like. Doesn't matter what we wear. I could have come today with a suit on. That wouldn't have mattered. My heart is what matters. My heart toward God is what matters. Your heart toward God is what matters. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for I will not sit down until he comes. See, they're getting ready to sit down to have this, this sacrificial dinner. They're getting ready to sit down. And he said, I won't sit. I won't move, and I'm not leaving until you bring that boy to me. So David come to him, beautiful young boy, red hair. It says he has beautiful eyes. He's handsome. He had a handsome appearance. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Can you imagine? I mean, you have Samuel coming in to this city that, that they're like, they were all freaking out when he comes in. He comes in the city and he brings this horn of oil and he starts dumping it on David. They have no idea why he's dumping this oil on David. David don't even have no idea why he's dumping this oil. He's just annoying him. He finds out what it was about. But they're all like, wow, they come and anointed David. But it says this. It says, and I love this part. It says, he anointed him, listen, in the midst of his brothers. God is going to bless you in the midst of your enemies, the midst of the ones who ridicule you, the midst of the ones who talk down about you. God is going to bless you in front of them. That's what he does. That's how he works. He's going to bless you. He's going to bless you. He's going to bless you. Listen. And it says, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. See, the Spirit of the Lord had left Saul because of his disobedience. And in your disobedience, the Spirit of the Lord will, will, will walk away from you, from upon you, the blessing upon your life. But in obedience, listen, it says that the Spirit of the Lord will mightily come upon you just like it mightily came upon David. I believe that the Spirit of God is, is, is came upon me when he asked me to come to this city, and I said yes. Did I get everything right? No. Have I messed it up a few times? Yes. Have I backed up? Yes. But my heart, my heart of hearts is for him. My heart of hearts is for him and to see what he wants for us to do in this city. See, David didn't know, and we talked last week, that we don't know what God has for us. David didn't know that he was going to go s slay a giant. You know what David did after this, after this meeting? You know what he did? He went back out to the field, and he waited. He waited. Sometimes we don't even want to wait. We're like, okay, God, you said I could have it. I want it now. You said I'm going to get it, so I want it now. But God says that we must wait sometimes. We wait for the blessing. We wait for him the right time because he knows the right time, the exact time. When you're living for him, the exact time and the exact moment when you, that all lines up, then he's going to go, okay, now. Bam. And the blessings come. The blessings flow. And all these things happen. Some of you I want to be careful here, but some of you need to maybe have a wake-up call when it comes to your children. David was a young man at the age of 16 when our kids are getting their driver's license, learning how to do a few things in life. He was out slaying giants. 
16-year-old boy out slaying giants. God said he's a man after my own heart at 16 years old. Where are our children at today? Are they children after God's own heart? Are we bestowing in them that message that says, after God's heart, child, are you after God's heart or after you after, are you after the things of the world? We must understand that we are the ones that are bringing our children up, and we have to bring them up in the right way. God first, everything else second. Everything else second. I mean everything else second to God. And so we have to realize that God wants our children to be obedient as well. This was a young boy who was 16, 15, 16 years old, and, and God described him as a man after his own heart. So where are we at this morning? Where are you at this morning? Is your heart after God's? Is it truly, truly a heart after God's? Are you after the things of the world? And it's okay to have things in the world. I'm not saying that at all. You can have all the things in the world that you want to have. But they cannot come before God. That is what God is wanting. So if you have your, if you have your Bible still out, turn to Acts chapter 13, verse 22. Acts chapter 13, verse 22. Before we go here, I want you to know, David, he slew a giant. And then he got invited to the house of Saul, to the king's place. Because when, when the Spirit of God Stop remaining on him, he was tormented to the point that he was in pain and agony. And, and if your life is like that, ask God to come upon you. Ask the Spirit to come inside of you. Ask Jesus to forgive you and cleanse you because there's something wrong. When you're living in that kind of torment that he's living in, something's wrong, and you need to identify that and get to the point of repentance. God is so blessed when you repent. He's so blessed when it's such a sweet fragrance to him when you repent of your sin. I don't care if you mess up 29,000 times. He's wanting the repentive heart. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no man can come to the Father except through him. But he said, Jesus said, I am an advocate for you. If you sin, if you fall down, I am the one that you go through, and you can get back up. See, he's not going to leave us down. He wants us to always be back up. So never let the sin take you down and then take you off track and just get you in a place that you shouldn't be. Say, God, forgive me of that sin. No matter what it is, say, God, forgive me of that sin. I repent. And just repent. Do it right. Don't repent knowing that you can repent and do it again. Repent in the way that it breaks your heart so bad that you cry and cry out to him. Say, God, I don't ever want to do that again. Whatever it is in me, Greg Locke, go to Greg Locke Monday. Whatever it is in me, that's causing me to live like this. I don't want it, God. Take it out of me. Sanctify me wholly. Consecrate me for you, Jesus, to do what you've called me to do. So he called David in, and David comes in, and he plays because he was a master musician. He's out in the field learning how to play an instrument while he's watching over the sheep. His name got around because they said, well, there's a young boy that plays the harp, and he can come in, and he can play, and I, that's going to help. No one else could soothe him. He's throwing everybody else. Get on out of here. I need somebody here that's going to help me. Don't just say you have power. Have power. Don't just say you can do this. Do this. And so David comes in, and David plays the harp for him, and what, what happens? He's soothed. His pain leaves. His headaches leave. And David goes away, and it all come back again. He called him back in again. But David did not have an agenda to go, well, you know, I'm in the house. I'm looking around going, this is how I'm going to arrange it. This is how I'm going to do it. This is how I'm, you know. He honored the authority of the house. He honored Saul. Even though Saul had not honored God because he was a chosen man of God. He honored him. 
even though Saul chased him and tried to kill him, he honored him. David could have killed him several times. You remember Saul was in the cave one time going to the restroom, and David was right there hiding down, and he, and he reached up and he cut a little bit off of his garment to let him know, I could have killed you, but I didn't. But David is a little boy. He didn't, he didn't have this agenda. Some people come to church and come to the house of the Lord and they have an agenda. I want to be on the platform. I want to be seen. I want to be known. No, you don't. Really, no, you don't. You want to hide as, as deep in the, in the places you can grooves as you can hide because you need to let God have every bit of that light and you need to take zero, zero of it because it's all his. It belongs to him. And David wasn't a man seeking after the light of God. He was doing what God called him to do. He was doing what God told him to do. And that's what the word of God says in Acts here. It says here that, and when he had removed him, he raised up, and to him, David, to be their king, who also gave a testimony. And he said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. Listen to this part. Which shall fulfill all of my will. He will do everything I ask him to do. If I say jump, he will say how high. If I say go here, he will say how do I get there. It's not, he does not, he does not do anything outside of the will of God. He's God is saying do this and he will just do it. David messed up. We watched him mess up so many times, stealing the man's wife. He had a woman for every day of the week. The concubines floating through his palace. Woman for every day of the week, David had. God laid all that aside because he knew what he called him to do. He knew that David was a man that would do what he told him to do because he needs men and women to do what he says to do so the will of God can be fulfilled through them. And if you don't do it, he will find somebody else. I want the blessing. I want to be the one that says, yes, God, I'll do whatever you want me to do. Wow, that's weird, but I'll still do it. I mean, he's asked me to do some stuff that's pretty weird. But I still did it. Why? Because I feel like that. I am a man after God's own heart. When I look in the mirror, that's what I see, a man after God's own heart. I don't see this old bald guy. I just see a man after God's own heart, loving him with everything in me. It says, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all of my will. So my challenge to you this morning is, if you're not, will you become sons and daughters, men and women after the heart of God? If we don't get to that point, the train wreck is going to continue to happen in our life. We're going to still be on a downhill slope. You can say all day long, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. And everyone in your house knows you're not. And the seers of the world know you're not. So why don't we stop saying, I'm good, I'm good, I don't need anything. Why don't we start saying, God, whatever it is in me that's not of you, I want it gone today. I want it gone right now, God, because I want to be a man, woman, son, and daughter after your own heart. And I know that, God, when I do that, you're going to bless me beyond measure, God. You're going to step into my life. You're going to hang upon my life and show me all that you have for me. And, God, even if I have to wait 20 years 25, 30 years, God, to receive that. I will wait. I will wait upon the Lord because of God. God says those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength and fly. And God will take us places that we never thought we would go. But we have to give ourselves to him. We have to consecrate ourselves. 
If you're not sanctified, holy, taking the sin, the sin desire out of your heart, come up and get that sanctification this morning. If you're not consecrated to God, if you haven't changed your clothes and you got saved and you're still wearing the same stuff and you're still wearing the same garments, don't be dismayed because there's something in your life that 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 you are going to miss out on. Don't be like Samuel and just um, just sad because Saul is not. Pre- or don't be like Saul or Samuel and, and be sad because. Saul is not going to be king anymore. Don't be sad because the things in your life are not going to be no more, but be excited because God has something for you. He has something for you this morning, and it's a blessing that he wants for you. It's a blessing that he has for you. If you would just get yourself right before him, so many of us will wear the same clothes and wear the same thing. You know when Peter, remember when Peter got out of the boat, when he denied Christ three times, he got out of the boat, and three times he put his jacket back on and dove into the water and went to the shore where Jesus was, cooking his breakfast, and Jesus asked him three times, do you love me? And he said, yes, do you love me? He said, yes, do you love me? He said yes for the three times that he denied Christ. Three times he said, yes, I love you. Yes, I love you. Then do this. Then do this. Then do this. When you live for God, there comes a doing to what he's called you to do. Don't be those people that say, I'll be there and never show up. Don't be the people that say, yeah, I'll do that and never show up to do it. Be the people that, man, I don't know if I can do that. Man, I don't know if I want to do that or not. Ah, Then you show up and do it. Be that kind of a people. Or just say yes and do it. But if, if, if you're not sure, you know, say no and then just say yes later and go do it. Don't be a person who says, oh, because of the, the safe face, oh, yeah, I'll be the one to do it. Oh, yeah, I'll give, I'll give it all and give nothing. Don't be that person this morning. I'm going to let you out early. Let's stand. So my challenge to you, I feel like the God, the God said, um, he didn't even give me any notes this morning, so I feel like he just said, that I'm going to give you something to say. And, and I'm, the challenge is, are you seeking God with everything in you? Are you, are you considered in his eyes to be a son and daughter after his heart? Or as I said last week, are you just living nominal, just getting by? I'm a Christian. I'm going to heaven. <laughs> There's way more than that. <laughs> There's way more than just, just going to heaven. I mean, come on. Jesus paid the price for that. You get that just by receiving it, asking him to forgive you of your sins and come into your heart and live in your life. You receive that. But there's people counting on you. Again, I cannot emphasize enough how much that you need to know there's people counting on you to be centered up with God. Their lives are at stake and depend upon it. You must not talk about power, but you must have power to do the things that you say you can do. If you're not sold out all the way, I mean, I, be honest with yourself. I mean, you, you, right now I'm asking you, it's before God. He's watching down over us right now, and he's asking the question through me, are you, in my eyes, God is asking this, a man, a daughter, a son, a child, after my own heart. And if, if the answer is, you know, God, really, I'm just getting by. I'm just trying to get by and pay my bills and do the best I can do. If that's your answer, come and pray and ask God to fill you, to fill you, to fill you with everything that he has for you because he has so much for you. He wants to bless you beyond measure, but you have to open that door and let him in to bless you, to encourage you, to strengthen you. And when you testify, The walls come down of what God's going to do today when you testify to others what God did for you and to you. The walls of their hearts will come down. The Holy Spirit jumps right in and does the work. And we don't even have to do anything else beyond that. Let him do the work. So we're going to pray. We're going to open up for altar. Listen. 
don't, and don't get up. Don't just come down and go, okay, God, forgive me and get that fixed. Listen, we're not here to get a fix. We're here to be fixed. The same, it would just, it's just the way it is. We're not here to just like shove a needle in my hand and fix me. Um, no, let me last a week, make it last two weeks. We're here to get fixed, final, final. This, let this be the final fixing. And then when you mess up, you get back up and you just keep going. But let this be the thing. Your life should go uphill from here on if you are honest with yourself and honest with him. Let's turn the Abbey music up. Let's come. Let's pray. If you're not sanctified, ask the Lord to sanctify you, which has taken the sin nature out of your heart and the want to to sin out of your life. Some of you have stopped sinning, but you still have that want to, that desire. Man, I still want to go back to that. Or if something goes wrong in your life, you're like, well, I'm going back to that. I'm going to go ahead and do that again because that's where I'm at. That's what I'm going to do. You get mad and throw fits and whatever. We cannot do that anymore. We cannot continue to throw those fits and go, well, I'm just going to go back to this and go back to that. No, you've done gotten rid of this and got rid of that. God has so much more for you. I could just keep going. Come and pray. Be honest this morning. Be honest, be honest, be honest with yourself. Because look at your life and see where your life's at. Look at your children's life. See where it's at. Break it off. Break it off. Break it off. That, that whatever it is that's dragging you down, dragging your children down, dragging your family, it's not for you anymore. Let him have it. Give it to him. Trust him with it. And have a good week. In Jesus' name.